After jacking up the vehicle and properly supporting it, place a pan underneath the vehicle directly underneath the engine oil pan drain plug. Choose the appropriate size wrench that fits snugly onto your oil pan drain plug and then remove the drain plug. It's generally a good idea to run the engine for a little bit until it reaches normal operating temperature. Then shut the engine off and let it set for five minutes for the oil to be able to drain back down to the pan and this will ensure that you drain most of your oil and any contaminants that are in the engine oil. Carefully remove the drain plug allowing the oil to drain into the pan. Pay close attention to how the oil shoots out so you want to adjust the drain pan so it captures that oil. Clean and inspect your oil pan drain plug. If the sealing surface is cracked, chipped, it's usually a good idea to replace this drain plug. Usually on your third or fourth oil chains, it's sometimes a good idea to replace your oil pan drain plug. Alright, with your new drain plug, you can install this into the oil pan, making sure to start it with your fingers and get about three or four turns before you put a wrench on it. As a matter of fact, spin it up until it just gets tight and then finish tight tightening it with a wrench. Use fresh, clean oil to lubricate the new seal on your drain plug and tighten it to the proper specifications. Don't over tighten it. If you're unsure, check your vehicle manual for the proper torque specifications and possibly even use a torque wrench. Wipe up any oil drips and clean up around the area. Next, we want to remove the engine oil filter you'll want to purchase an engine oil filter wrench. There are many different types and sizes to choose from. Make sure you choose the correct size that fits your oil filter on your particular engine. Make sure you have placed the pan directly under your oil filter as you're loosening the oil filter. You want the excess oil that's in the filter and passages to drain into the pan. If you happen to spill some oil, you can use cat litter as an oil absorbent or purchase oil absorbent from your local parts store. This can be used to soak up any oil spills that may occur in your driveway or garage. Again, be very careful because if you happen to change the engine oil while it's warm, that oil could be hot. Once you loosen the filter, let it drain for a minute or two before totally removing your oil filter. Continue removing the oil filter, paying close attention that the oil is still warm and that oil remains in the passages and will continue to drain. Look at the oil filter mating surface where the o-ring contacts the engine to see if the o-ring is still stuck to the engine. If it is, remove it. This is very common. Check your engine or owner's manual to 
make sure you get the right classification of oil that is specified for your engine. Anything equal to or better can be used in your vehicle. The SAE grade is dependent on your choice and engine situation. Make sure to select the proper engine oil filter for your vehicle. Most stores will have an application manual hanging somewhere in that row that will enable you to look up the year, make, model, and engine type or engine size. Very important. Depending on how your oil filter is mounted to the engine, you can add some oil to the filter. In this case, if it mounts to the side, you'll spill oil if you have fresh oil in the filter. And in some cases, like a BMW where it mounts over the top, the oil would just drain right out. So in those cases, you would have to leave the filter empty. But in the case of this vehicle, which is a 2002 Dodge Stratus, I'm going to go ahead and add oil to the filter so when I start the engine after this oil change it won't run very long without lubricant. What you'll find is that with an empty oil filter when you start the engine at fresh after an oil change it's going to run without oil pressure for a few seconds until the oil filter will fill up with oil. But in this case, I'm going to add some oil to the filter to lessen the amount of time it runs without lubrication. Also, be sure to only use fresh, clean oil and rub it around the new rubber O-ring that's on your oil filter. You want clean oil on your O-ring and you want to make sure that square cut O-ring is well lubricated before you put it on the vehicle. As we were discussing earlier about priming the oil filter, best practice for engines that are turbocharged is to disable the ignition system and crank the engine over for about 20 seconds and do this two times to assist pulling the oil from the engine pan into the oil filter and the passages so that way your turbocharger doesn't run dry. It's been known that if you start an engine up fresh after an oil change the turbocharger will spin up and the time it takes for the oil pressure to build up can sometimes cause the turbo seals to melt and then you end up with a lot of blue smoke coming from the exhaust due to the turbo seal leaking but this is something I just wanted to throw in there. Next, you want to check to make sure that the O-ring is still not attached to the oil filter mating surface as we discussed before. Take a towel and wipe off the oil and dirt accumulation from around that mating surface. And at this point, we can now put on our oil filter. Spin on your oil filter. If you're strong, in most cases, hand tight will usually work. For some of us that have the strength in our fingers and hands, we can tighten it up until it's uh, good and tight just by hand only. If you're limited in strength then once you get it hand tight you can use the oil filter wrench to tighten it an additional quarter of a turn but do not over tighten your oil filter in some cases it'll make it very difficult to remove While you're under the vehicle, it's unlikely that you may see one of these Zerk fittings, but you may find them near your ball joints or in some cases where your steering linkages are. These Zerk fittings you can attach a grease gun to 
in order to inject grease into the ball joints and balls and socket joints of your steering linkages. Shown here are a couple of Zerk fittings on steering linkages that you can attach your grease gun to to lubricate. Here is a drive shaft and universal joint that has been lubricated. If you have a front wheel drive vehicle, check your constant velocity joint boots, your CV joint boots, for any signs of grease leaking from those boots. This would indicate that your boots would have to be replaced. Here we are at the most important step, adding your fresh engine oil. It has been known that people follow all the steps except this one and then drive their engine or drive their vehicle for a few miles and then all of a sudden the engine blows up. Come to find out, oh, I forgot to put my oil in the car. Don't forget to add your engine oil. Something else that would be considered a best practice is to check all your lights and make sure all your lights work on your vehicle. At this point, after adding your engine oil and you followed your user's manual on adding the proper number of quarts of oil to your engine, check on the dipstick and see where the oil level is on your dipstick. You want it to be in between the crosshatch marks definitely closer to the max after a fresh oil change. Once you've filled it with engine oil, start your engine and let it run for a couple of minutes. Then shut the engine off, allow it to set for two or three minutes, and check the oil again. If it needs engine oil, add engine oil. Otherwise, you are finished with your oil change. Thank you very much for watching this video.